What's up everyone, the win this is all about UFC. When was when did you start getting into MMA? I mean UFC. I mean first all I can remember hearing about these are MMA promotions like Pride out of Japan. But when UFC was coming into the forefront, you probably back to like the dark days when the Gracie family when when they heard about the UFC back and what it is today. I mean, Hanzo, Hoist, I mean, those are like the godfathers of the MMA. Those what put UFC on the map. I mean, Hoist Gracie, if y'all did not know, he was the first of the Gracie family to compete at the very first UFC fight card. Back in what you see is, is you see back in the dark days, like Vegas and New Cow, it was, it was a street fight. It had no rules back in the day, no rules, no laws, no sanctions. It kind of turned into like a free for all. But until when UFC was kind of like struggling, uh, like, well, we gotta make this until dang white, uh, took over and you know they say the, the rest is history and you see went into like they have to have to have laws, sanctions, rules, weigh ins, go into any big name city all over the world and get sanctioned to fight in that city. Uh, I think who was it? I remember hearing that the uh, oh, UFC has got to be, got to be uh, sanctioned allowed in New York. Well, take back what uh, take back to what uh, Senator John McCain when he made like what UFC was. It was just it was just a free for all street fight. It had no rules, no laws. But now it's kind of like up and up. It's like peaker and boomer. Now that. Many years later, since you the Ultimate Fighting Champion, what it is, is now able to fight in New York because, you know, what's been said about MMA being allowed to fight in New York, it was kind of like, oh, it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Now, it, now it has been, now every city in New York, it's like wherever you see is. But you think now with the UFC, how it started, the very first season of the fire, which to best of my knowledge, I thought, oh, it's not going to work. It's, it's just going to be like one and done. The fires of the first season of the fire, uh, Forrest Griffin, Stephen Bonners of the world, it's kind of like, these guys are all a bunch of uh, nobodies, but you dang way once has said before, you see as real as it gets. But now you look at how far the ultimate fire the very first one to the upcoming one and the fighters from all different walks of life from Canada to the States to Russia to Mexico. I mean it's like a world global brand. I mean when I first started watching more UFC fight cards and just taking their accounts, I was like, it could be like UFC's doing a fight card in Calgary or wherever or in, or in New York or Boston. It's just like, wow. I myself consider myself a, as, a, as a fan of the UFC, but watching it from how it started and yes it took baby step to really where it is today some people say is there one UFC fight that you saw on TV that you was just like <sighs> BJ Penn you should not call me I mean with BJ Penn when he first broke into the UFC I am saying here's this Hawaii uh, uh, MMA fight BJ Penn and he no. Kale Uno BJ Penn, I think it was, yeah. But, uh, yeah, BJ Penn's first UFC fight, it was, it was mind blowing. When he, when BJ Penn took on Sean Shirk, 
Now that's it. Now that, that was the fire. It was just like, oh my god, he, he, that, that was a lot of animosity between both fire. I love watching both of them sort of throw down. <coughs> is there one enemy? Is there one UFC fight that people are still talking to this day? And they look at the magnitude. Frank Muir, Tim Celia. Twenty years later, people are still talking about that fight because that fight was just like, oh my god, uh, the way hell. Mir uh, uh, Mir locked Sill's arm. I did the instant replay and Joe Rogan. And I know some of Joe Rogan is, is watching this video out of the utmost respect. And you can see Joe Rogan's like facial reaction and the way he just called. And like, look at that elbow, look at that elbow. It just snapped right to. Now that we're talking about a fight that was just like. There are two fights you never thought it was a strike force. Darren Henderson fought Fedor and Milenko. If, if you're talking about a dream match, two legends in the game, Darren Henderson fought for strike force at the time he was a former UFC uh, 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 fighter. And he takes on Russia's. Uh, Godfather of MMA, Fedor Malenko, and stylistically, I was just kind of like, who, who, uh, I was, was kind of like riding the fence, see who, who needs to win that fight, and I thought, oh, Fedor just got, got, got crack under pressure, because we, we have seen how far Fedor Malenko has fought. Early days in Russia and all of here and there everywhere. But when he fought the Harrison and he saw stylistically, it, it's gonna be like a cakewalk for, for Fader. But Dan Henderson, when he got when he got the uh, Fader was like kinda like on oh, his knees. Henderson was like on oh, his back. And he slipped out the back door, hit hit Fader over an uppercut, it was just like he just kinda like Saw the opening and just uppercut Fedor Malenko. All of a sudden, like, oh my god, he just knocked out Fedor Malenko. When Fedor fought Fabrice Verdu in Strike Force, you're thinking this is like a, a grappling against a striker. And Fabrice Verdu, a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu legend, when he locked Fedor in that, in that triangle arm bar. I'm saying like, uh, he done, he done, but Fedor tapped. I'm saying, good lord. Could this be the end of Fedor's MMA career? Fast forward 20 years later, and he's still fighting in Bellator. The upcoming Bellator had a Grand Prix against Frank Beer, which I'm like, all over like, uh, but definitely, I think that, the, the success of what MMA you see where it started to where